So Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 is officially out now. I did a movie review for the first Winnie the Pooh movie. If you guys want to check that out, I will leave a link to that in the description and also in the comment section of this video. Now let's jump into this video essay. All of Ashdown will burn. The first movie. The first Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, when I first saw that movie, I actually had a lot more of a positive reaction to that movie when I first saw it because I actually ended up getting to see that movie early, so I kind of brought my hype level up a bit more than it should have been. And I gave the movie a mostly positive review. I mean, I think I said it was either a decent film or a bad film, uh, but after rewatching it after that period or point in time, I can say that my overall thoughts on that movie are just straight up negative. I don't think that movie was very original in its basis. I don't think that the creature designs were very good uh, because there were no creature designs. You can tell it was cheaply made. It was just a couple of guys wearing masks and it was a basic slasher. And when they had the announcement of the second movie and that they were doing a overall Pooniverse in the Avengers style. I kind of rolled my eyes and I was like, okay, let's see what they do this time. Maybe they might win me over. And that second trailer came out and I think I had the reaction that a lot of people had was, this looks better, let's see how they deliver. And I can gladly say that Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey 2 is a major improvement. That being said, let's talk about it budget. The budget of the first Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey I believe was 50000 so you can definitely tell how cheaply made that movie was. However, it did gross $5 million in the overall box office, so that means that they had a lot more budget to play around with with the sequel, and you can tell that they definitely put a lot more budget. We're not quite Hollywood level yet, but there is a much improvement to the point where I can say that I wasn't unimmersed in this movie. The creature designs looked really good. It's very much different compared to the first movie since there's actual prosthetics involved in the creature design. Also with their increased budget, they actually got an actual on-screen writer which wrote the Summer of 84 movie, which I think personally was a decent film. And with that, they brought a whole new level of lore to these characters that was not just not present in the last movie. Also, we have a new Christopher Robin actor, and he does a phenomenal job in this movie, and we'll touch more on him in another category. Needless to say, the budget did help improve this movie by quite a bit, and it makes me wonder how the third movie is going to be when they probably put even more budget into that one improvement as i said before this movie has quite a bit of improvement compared to the last movie uh, as i said the acting is much better in this movie they don't feel like they don't really care uh christopher robin actor i really enjoyed him a lot in this movie uh, the screenplay overall is actually a way better story compared to the last one and also with the improvements and overall ideas and concepts i felt like they established fully established a world which you can kind of buy into a bit more there's something that this movie did compared to the last one that i think was severely lacking and that is fun they introduced a level of fun in this movie that just was not present in the last one now we're not quite where I think we should be with the ridiculous concept that this is. I mean, it's a Winnie the Pooh horror movie, so I still think they take a lot of story beats a little bit too seriously in this movie. However, I do think that there's a huge level of fun that's added in there, like classic lines that they throw in for some of these characters. Like, for example, before Winnie the Pooh gets an axe to the head, they had classic lines like, oh, bother in there. Or they even cave, uh, Tigger like more personality where all these characters had more personality compared to their last movie counterparts where they were just silent the entire movie they were basically just slashers here every character has their own distinct personality you have Tigger who is very much Freddy Krueger you have the owl who is much more calculated and then you essentially have Pooh Bear who is much more uh, Michael Myers ish he's a little bit more quiet uh, a choice that I'm not very fond of but at the same time I think works within the personalities of all these characters and since he's kind of like the silent leader I think it works pretty well the kills are much more creative I mean to the point where I think they tripled the body count in this movie and a lot of the kills can also be kind of hard to look at because I think the practical effects look really good along with these moments 
Christopher Robin. Christopher Robin in this movie, I think, was a lot better because in the last movie, you couldn't really get behind him because, you know, you, you could see that, you know, he abandoned them, he left them starve. Whereas in this story, you see the consequences of the last movie and then it affects his life in this movie and you get behind him a lot more. Uh, the way the actor plays him, he has a lot more of a gentleness which is expected more from Christopher Robin. I thought the casting for the character was pretty good in this movie and I think they did a solid job with the Christopher Robin character and his connection to Pooh Bear in this movie. The story. The story, again, like I said, is an improvement on the last movie, but my biggest problem that I have with this movie is the fact that it still takes itself a little bit too seriously. Uh, for example, the whole retconning of the last movie, I, I, I feel like with what they did with this movie, it's very meta, but the problem that I have with that is that the first movie isn't actually canon according to this movie, it's actually, it's based on true events in this timeline, but the last movie is a movie within this movie, and I feel like that presents a lot more problems within the overall story. For example, if they were creatures that, you know, were starving in the last movie because Christopher Robin abandoned them, that makes sense within a story beat. However, in this movie, they change it to where they're genetically altered children, and Christopher Robin's brother is genetically altered into Winnie the Pooh. And then they also show some flashbacks where Christopher Robin's mind was blocking out some of the horrific thing Pooh Bear and friends were doing where they were eating people, were eating, potentially eating other animals. So then that completely retcons the first movie's concept of him abandoning them and then them starving. So then it's like, why are they still mad at Christopher Robin? Anything, I think it would have made more logical sense that they would be more angry at the person who genetically altered them rather than being mad at Christopher Robin. They constantly say in this movie over and over again, we gotta get revenge, you know, we gotta get Christopher Robin, but then it's just like, why? Like, why aren't you guys just mad at the guy who genetically altered you? That choice I don't feel like was very strong in this movie. However, I think that one thing that the script does very well is that it just gets you to those kills. I mean, a lot of the stuff in here is stupid, let's be honest, but then when it actually brings you over to those character moments with Winnie the Pooh or with Christopher Robin, I think that those moments actually work exceptionally well in this movie. Also, the other problem that I had with the story too was that I think that the second act it's a lot slower because they have to explain exposition, but when they explain exposition, it's not very entertaining. We have an exposition dump from a lead character in this movie who explains the backstory of who and all the experiments and everything, but instead of showing us that, it just has him talking to the camera for what it feels like forever, and it greatly slows down the pace of the movie. Uh, again, it just really makes that second act really drag out to the point where it can be a bit unbearable. The first act was actually very strong with the introduction of Pooh Bear and his friends, introducing their newer personalities, showing what they can do, showing how much more brutal and how much more creative the kills were going to be in this movie. And then the third act is half good and half bad. The good parts are all the mayhem and carnage that goes on. I mean, you have Winnie the Pooh with a flaming chainsaw on his part. You have the owl throwing up on people and it's like acid. And you have Tigger going on a whole killing spree, giving his whole Freddy Krueger routine as he does it. Better watch where you go, bitch. Those parts are great, but then you get into some other parts that are just contrivances that just don't work. Like they kidnap Christopher Robin's sister to, I, I, I don't know why they even kidnap her because by the end of the movie, I mean, the cop just goes, Oh yeah, by the way, Christopher Robin, uh, after you killed Coop, uh, Pooh Bear, uh, your, your sister was found in the forest. Like, why even kidnap her at all if, you know, nothing's gonna even really happen or they don't even explain what, why they kidnapped her. But all in all, a million times better than that first movie. And yeah, this was a better, better watch. And I can't say that's absolutely a perfect movie. And this is where I'm gonna jump into my other category. The Pooniverse. The Pooniverse is the funniest announcement that I think I've heard from these creators. Uh, I knew that they were going to do Bambi, I knew that they were going to do Peter Pan, I knew all that. But to have them all within an interconnected universe, you need to get everybody on board for that. And I think Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2 might end up doing that for people. But also I think it's going to take one more film to get people on board with this universe. And I think Bambi might end up being that movie. I mean, if 
you guys seen that Bambi trailer, I personally think that it actually generally looks kind of good and it looks like they poured even more budget into that. The deer in that, the CG deer, doesn't look bad. I mean, it was actually a really cool looking moment and completely took me off guard. And I think that's part of the level of fun that I've kind of wanted from these movies is with that ridiculous nature of Bambi flipping a car. I think that we're not quite there with the Winnie the Pooh character yet. And they are going to do a third movie, so I think that what they could do is, with this first movie, you know, obviously it was ultra serious for no reason. There's this one that has a mix of seriousness and a little bit of goofiness. Then they could just probably go straight out all goofy with the third movie and have everybody completely on board for this Pooniverse. I wouldn't recommend that you see this in theaters, obviously. Um, I would even recommend that you spend a ton of money on this. I think that if you can see this movie for free, or even uh, maybe stream it, I would recommend that you do that if you want to check it out and maybe get on board with this. But who knows, maybe this overall Pooniverse that they're establishing may be just the level of fun that we're looking out uh, for, for these uh, childhood characters turning into just psychopaths. Oh, bother.